hello there guys and welcome welcome back to the channel so this is going to be war 2 season 31 and uh, there has been quite a lot of controversy about this war which is obviously absolutely amazing and i do how to address it all right so first things first um I'm still struggling with uh covid infection so you know i haven't been uploading or streaming as much recently um it, it, it's not a pretty sight but um hopefully hopefully the worst is over i think i'm starting to feel a tiny bit better but obviously uh it is how it is right so what exactly happened first of all uh gd40 is very capable alliance they believe won the previous alliance war season in general so they are you know very very strong alliance war alliance and shortly after the war had started, a couple of hours um, after that, um, basically one of their officers kicked out uh, 24 members of their alliance before alliance leader could demote that officer and kick him out. And uh, all the people who had not joined the war at that point could not rejoin it after joining the alliance, which was about like i think seven people or eight people i'm not entirely sure on the numbers but the point is um somebody sabotaged gd40 um by logging in one of their office officers accounts and just kicking out the people and because of that part of the alliance couldn't actually take part in the war so they will be unable to explore the entire map now again i was half conscious as all of this was happening so i didn't really get the details in real time but by the time i woke up um agent x had messaged me in pms which is going to be the pms that i am going to be showing here because that was kind of the post i'm actually quite good friends with several people in gt40 which is why this entire thing sucks even more but uh yeah the point is that uh Unfortunately, it's a horrible situation for GT40, but as Agent X says, no one in GT40 blames anyone in New Nation, so I want to tell all the viewers that there is no problem between GT40 and New Nation. New Nation is a great alliance with great players and people. We, we and GT40 will work to find out how it happened and who did it. It's very sad to see how some people act and play. And that's very, very true. There are some very, I don't know, petty, horrible people playing this game as well, as there are some awesome and amazing people and uh, it just generally ruins it for everybody when somebody does something like this now and again how did it exactly go down how did somebody knew the login information of one of their officers or whatever else not going to be my place to speculate or do any of that stuff uh, regardless of what had happened it it sucks for gt40 as an alliance that being said uh we can go through the actual lines for fights. Now, since I'm hardly at my best right now, I kind of feel that my officers are taking it a bit easy on me. So I, I in this war, I was also... Lot, well, I still had my five fights, I believe. Yeah, I had my five fights. But uh, for the rest of the war, I was just a pre-fight mule. And uh, I only actually end up using Thing right now uh incidentally i do think that uh thing is like one of the top alliance war attackers right now because of this path two and this uh, strike counter fury node where basically thing is absolutely immortal probably the safest choice for anybody to go with and also because now we have hazard shift shock and bleed which are obviously things that thing is immune to and uh, we're gonna see that i do every single fight in this war with thing and you know safe and sturdy and uh well in my book at the very least thing is kind of making a comeback when it comes to alliance war meta i would say and here it is uh there was a problem point in this fight somewhere around here where that green goblin refuses to throw his level two he occasionally does that and it absolutely irks me Green Goblin in general is just a champion that I really dislike fighting against. Even more so if that Green Goblin does have high ground on him. And uh, with Thing especially, he's not 
hard or pleasant fight, but you can't do anything to that healing. And it always makes the fights like really long and really tedious. The fight's not hard. Again, every time he, you know, strikes my block or I get to parry, um, I trigger protection. So, you know, at this point, there's pretty much nothing that Green Goblin can do to win this fight. And yeah, <laughs> there's like not much of that. Uh, but only way I think he can actually do real damage to me is if he gets to level 3 and activates it whilst my protection is down. I think that's the only way I would end up taking damage in this fight. But here we can see that slowly but surely I have ramped up my Furies here also. And with 36 Furies I'm starting to hit look, you know, a bit harder. I do have, you know, medium level boosts active, so that's kind of helping me a bit. And the slowly but surely the thing is finishing off this fight. There's nothing too interesting. Uh, next up, Immortal Hulk. And this is a very, very easy fight once again with Thing. There's going to be absolutely nothing spectacular. Um, there is like brute force in this node, but again, that brute force doesn't really matter, especially against Immortal Hulk. And this fight is actually even easier because it has power focus 1, which means that as soon as Immortal Hulk goes past a bar of power, uh, you know, I can be very, very aggressive and not worry about pushing him to level 3 pretty much ever. And that's pretty much going to be the entire fight here. Um, much easier, much kind of stress-free, much more stress-free fight than it was against the Green Goblin. Obviously, because I'm not doing any damage over time effects, he will end up triggering his immortality, which, you know, is fine, which is not the biggest deal. And again, I'm slowly but surely building up my Furies with Thing as well, just so I can hit slightly harder. I don't really want to use any special attacks because, again, I don't want to lose those uh, charges that help me mitigate even more damage. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of straightforward here. Just hit the Immortal Hulk, don't get hit too much, and everything works out. So he's going to go Immortal here in a second. He has like 50 plus Furies. And again, even though at this point, for instance, he's unblockable, even if he manages to land a combo 2, 3, 5, 10, 15, you know, he wouldn't be able to do any meaningful damage uh, to the thing. And now I just need to finish off the fight. It, it, it again took a while, but it's nothing too crazy. Now against this Mangog, I'm going to be using uh, White Magneto pre-fight. reason for that is because Masochism is active on this... Um, node and uh, aside from parry stun i don't really apply any other debuffs so basically with that white monito pre-fight you can kind of completely bypass the masochism on this node and all of the other nodes are kind of irrelevant aside from that strike counter fury and again strike counter fury is genuinely helpful to think you know um i'll just you know not really take any damage pretty much ever so just need to make sure that I don't throw full 5 hit combos to give him extra charges. So I'm going to be doing 3 and 4 hit combos throughout the fight. Try and slowly build up more charges and more furies. And that is about it. So ideally I actually want to push this Mangog to level 2s. I need to keep in mind that he does have Mystic Dispersion. And uh, that can kind of complicate things at times. Especially, you know, if I trigger Dex or if I'm about how my unstoppable for instance expire we can see that he gained quite a lot of power and uh, he is at seven charges here so again ideally i don't really want him to use that level one so i'm going to be trying to all the time push him to level twos and uh, i'll do that often by kind of holding block in and uh, you know waiting for him to strike uh, dash in at me and strike me first so now he uses his level two which is absolutely awesome so I'm going to go in for another parry here. And yeah, I'm just going to hold my block. Do my 3-4 hits, hold my block. Don't want him to gain any more charges. And obviously if he does throw another level 1 after this, he will go unstoppable and unblockable. But, you know, thing isn't exactly going to die from that. And uh, I have 3 bars of power, so I will be free to get rid of all of his unstoppables and blockables and stuff. Um, but... Slowly but surely, again, like always with Thing, we have 
gotten him down to like 18% now there. I do eat a heavy attack, but again, protection kind of prevents me from taking any meaningful damage. And here at this point, I'm just going to go in for 5 hit combo and a level 3 to finish out the fight. And that's kind of it for my section 1 contributions. Uh, 3 fights with Thing here in the first half. And the second half, I'm going to be, as I mentioned, on path 9. I'm taking these hazard shift, uh, shock and bleed uh, lane. And the only other node in this void fight that I do need to be careful of is that one I open. So I can't damage him whilst void is stunned. So I'm going to end up taking way too much block damage. Uh, again, uh, I'm not really well either. So uh, I didn't even try to have kind of like a technical fight. Uh, I By going in, I knew that I'm going to be playing this very, very simple. I'm going to be taking all the hits on the block that I need to take. And then after that, you know, I'm just going to be trying to manage my combo meter. And that is about it. I didn't care about the amount of block damage that I need to take. Only thing that I was paying attention to is the combo meter so I can purify the Void's debuffs. And that is just about it. I genuinely did not care about block damage. Maybe I should have. I probably should have because I'm going to end up taking quite a lot of block damage. But, uh, you know, better safe than sorry. And especially knowing that I'm playing quite compromised, nowhere close to best of my ability to play my, like, you know, reaction time, reaction speed, and just in general, head is not working uh, as well as it could optimally. So... I was determined to kind of make this fight as easy as possible for myself without doing anything fancy. And uh, I did notice that I'm at like, oh, sheesh, I'm at like 62% health, but uh, still winning the hate health pull battle. And the longer this fight goes on, the harder I am hitting because I'm gaining those uh, passive fury buffs. And I just need to make sure that I do not mess this up that again i keep purifying those debuffs in time and rest of it is going to be fine if i need to use a couple of potions i'll use a couple of potions it's not the biggest deal in the world i only have like one more fight after this and again you know definitely not a gracious fight definitely nothing exciting just a very basic fight with against void where i'm trying to manage my combo meter the best i can and at this point i'm just going to go finish off the fight with a level three and job's done there. And then the last fight uh, is actually going to be kind of funny because I will make several mistakes. But I also knew that Wasp's Away doesn't really do any damage. And it tries to place a shock on you. And obviously thing is shock immune. So I wasn't even too worried if she is going to evade on me. And we can see that. So I did heal up. I activated... Uh, regeneration boost in previous fight i actually funnily enough activated power start one boost just because i had one expiring didn't really need it for anything at all but at the same time you know i know i didn't want it to expire so out of spite i activated that power boost one or start one boost just so it doesn't expire i guess uh, but yeah here against wasp obviously wasp has a lot less health so i have a lot less to worry about however she is a high ground defender so I do want to try my best to manage the high ground charges. And it's also kind of funny that I do lose my combo in this fight multiple times. But whenever I do these kind of like riskier plays, I was making sure that if I'm going to lose my combo, then I'm losing my combo at like even 10 combo or even 20 combo. So it actually doesn't hinder me in regards of getting rid of high ground charges. And we can see that it hasn't really. And here we are. I'm still at 97% health. Uh, that wasp is at like 37 again she awaits but i don't really care uh, because if anything it kind of actually helps me because it converts three of my rock stacks uh into furies and you know it's quite neat uh she does have two high ground charges three high ground charges at this point but you know the fight's nearly over and i don't have too much to worry about goes for level one here i'm going to punish it and there's like one percent hit in a block and jobs done and then i went ahead and used a few more pre-fights uh now the war is not over yet but again it's quite obvious that we are going to win again wanted to say that uh i know it sucks for gt40 i definitely feel for them uh 
and in general it sucks for i think everybody's enjoyment of alliance war seasons you know um even this is a shitty thing that's happening to our opponents it's not you know not making anybody feel better at the very least it doesn't make me feel any better if anything it just takes away from the enjoyment of the war in itself and uh yeah um i don't know why people are that way or why people do those things but uh There is always a cunt somewhere out there. <sighs> Either way, um, that was my war. <laughs> and uh, now I will retreat back to my bed and uh, try and sleep through this thing. <laughs> Hope you guys are having a great Sunday and I'll catch you guys soon. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the next